Hello. We have a rolling, <laughs> rolling, right? Wow. Wow. Sorry, we were gone last week. Yeah. But here we are in Italia. Italia in Biella, <laughs> and we've just climbed up a very steep hill um, for a little uh, sense of getting a sense of Biella. We're in the actually the kind of the foothills of what we believe are the Italian Alps. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we we've done our our, our full thing at uh, Ramella. We've done a full day and a half day. Let us remind you why we're here. Yeah. We ordered a spinner from this amazing small mill equipment manufacturer in Italy, um, Ramella, back in December mm -hmm. of last year, 2022, and it's ready. So they emailed us and they said, come on over to Italy and we'll train you on your spinner. So I don't know how many of the mills that they do, um, they make equipment for actually do get on a plane and travel to Italy. My impression was not so many. Yeah. So. I feel very honored we got to spend so much time with yeah. Emmanuel and Federico um, at Ramella, but we got to see our spinner, our own spinner that's going to get crated up and shipped across the ocean soon, and we got to see all the other amazing equipment that they're cooking up over there. It's, it's just incredible how impressive it is. At one point I had asked Federico, I said, do you feel comfortable calling this a factory? And he was like, well, yeah, it's a factory, but to my mind a factory always is sort of assembly line you know, you, you, each, everybody has their little widget job. And this is a, a factory space, but it's discrete stations where people are, and it's, it's a small group of people. Yeah, just um, a handful of people. Making this unbelievable equipment. Yes. Uh, does, and you're gonna meet uh, Manuel, but he designed them, and they're fabricating most of the parts right there. Yep. It was, um, man, it was impressive. Yes, so we should back up and give you a yeah. little context of where we're sitting. We're recording this outside, um, basically at the top of Biela. Um, in the, you, you know, we basically, Peg found us a road to take up. There's, there's usually a cable it's car. A cable car, <laughs> and it broke two weeks ago. Of yeah. course it did. So we hiked up to see if we could get some views. You're going to see a little B-roll here of, yeah. uh, of all of the beautiful sights. Um, it's a gorgeous town. It, it really is, and I think this is sort of the fortress area, part of the oldest section of the original Biela. Um, but it, again, it's pressed up against the foothills, so when you're looking at the mountains, you can you can tell there's you know, little towns tucked in here and there. And unfortunately, I'm so sorry we're not going to be here for that. I long. know we're, we flew in, we got in Monday morning, we didn't make it to Biela until almost Monday evening, and then we are leaving already tomorrow. Um, right. So we spent most of the time at Ramella, but yeah. we at least had a half day today to sort of wander about. Both right. Peg and I are suffering from jet lag on yeah. day three, yeah. uh, so we had to take a little nap this afternoon. But um, we did take a little video of us hiking up the hill, we should yep. show you. Yep. Well, we are all done with our training at Ramella. We were too whooped to do a video yeah, we really the first were. two days. So instead we're gonna go on a bit of a hike here. Yeah, I don't know how well you can tell, but we are walking up a steep hill uh, in the town of Biella. Typically they have a running cable car, but what's the matter with it? It just, just broke two weeks ago. <laughs> so we've got our uh, bag of cheese. Yeah, <laughs> and we're hiking up a steep hill. And. Uh, Hopefully the views are nice. It's a, it's a kind of a cloudy day, but Biella is in Piedmont. I don't know how the Italians pronounce it, but the foothills of the Italian Alps. And so the little town that it's in is pretty flat itself, but then there's hills right next to it. And that's where we're hiking. More from us when we get to the top. <laughs> Bye. I love the streets, the the, the, the the rocks, all pebble, oversized pebbles, all arranged with yeah. the center drainage. It's, it's well, just, I wear these barefoot shoes, and I've been saying, you know, they're from Vivo Barefoot, and I love wearing <laughs> them. But you're on these like these these literal like round stones right. sticking out. Yeah. It's more than just the cobblestones you might think of. They are like really are getting a foot smooth massage. rocks <laughs> right it's, yeah but it's it's a it's a just a beautiful area um huge thunderstorm came through last night so it looked, tons it looks of rain like maybe more might come through i guess according to our host uh at ramella it's a pretty rainy town mm -hmm. but we saw we had a lot of sunshine so far in yeah the trip. yeah um so uh without further ado yeah shall we meet the, the the gentlemen that have given us so much of their time and see the factory so I, um, I started by interviewing Federico, uh, who is the primary, he is the salesperson for Ramella, and that's going to be followed by your interview with... Emmanuel, 
who does a lot of the design of the equipment. He programs the, he programmed the computer on our spinner. Uh, not only that, he is their traveling like yeah. install person. Yeah. He's been all over the world. He doesn't mention this in the interview, but I have to brag on his behalf. They said they do a ton of business in South America. And his English is great, as you'll see. Right. But he was saying, and so we needed someone to go and install in Peru and Argentina. So, so I had to learn Spanish. So, learn, why not? And you have to, a lot of parts on the equipment. You got to yeah. know. It's incredible. But anyway, first meet uh, Federico. Siragusa. I'm in charge of sales for Pietro Ramella. We are a textile machines manufacturer and we are based in the northwest of Italy. Our company has a long tradition in the textile industry. It was started by my grandfather Pietro with a lot of passion, a lot of uh, talent for the textile industry and for the mechanical textile, which is part of the textile but has been so important for the development of the industry in this place. Um, yeah, take me back the why, how did textile become so critical? And, and, and when I read in the history books, it's like the 13th century. What, yes, what yes, made textile first, land the, here? The first treaties to regulate the textile ex commercial exchanges were dated in Middle Age, that's true. And then it's the in the 19th uh, century, the 1800s, when uh, particular families of Biella, they developed the industry so much, buying the machines from, uh, from England. That was the key, the game changer, because a specific family, the Sella family, which is absolutely important for this town and for the country, they bought the machines. They went to Belgium, where an English manufacturer was, at that time and they bought eight different machines and they made the first mechanical woolen mill in this country. So that was the key moment of the development of the industry. From the craftsmanship it became industry. Okay. So that was the period of the industrial revolution in uh, everywhere but in England most of all. There was still a gap between this area and some other areas but uh, Thanks to this uh, very important change, uh, we we became one of the most famous uh, textile cities in the world. And how did your gr was your grandfather always in textiles? Well, after the the Second uh, World War, uh, he fortunately he came back alive, and right. uh, he was working for another textile machines manufacturer, and he decided to to quit and to to start his his own his own business. And uh, he opened the, the company in uh, 1947. And it so wasn't a mill, it was since a... Then, ever since then, he always worked for the, for the textile industry. But when he started his business, it wasn't to um, weave wool, it was to make the, the equipment that would weave wool. Or, he or started you making a carding machine, oh, okay. a carding set, which is a long machine, a long carding set made of several groups starting from raw fibers and uh, uh, ending with the, with the carded fiber in uh, slubbing, mm -hmm. slubbing, the typical woolen system. Um, yeah, that, that's our machine since the beginning. Then through the years, through the decades, through the generations, because we are the, the nephews, um, we had to change a little bit our production between the end of the 90s and the beginning of the new millennium because of the textile crisis all over the world and because of many reasons, competition coming from local countries and, and that situation. And uh, we decided to downsize our machine and make smaller machines for other customers, the small volumes uh, fiber mills of the world, alpaca and wool most, most of all. So, with the same approach, industrial approach, we have been designing new machines for us, not new to the textile industry, but new for us, for the size of those machines. 
we have been uh, able to enter in specific markets like uh, the United States. Uh, we were not in the in the U.S. market before, but uh, we are selling machines in the U.S. now, and, uh, and we want, of course, to continue. Uh, our customers are, like I said before, the alpaca breeders, and uh, wool, wool, uh, of course, is is our fiber, and that's what we do now. But you're selling all over the world. Right. Of course, Europe is our domestic market. Uh, Europe is, right. Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and, the, and North America. And South America? And South America, because they have a lot of uh, alpaca, vicuña, and, and those fibers. Do you feel that um, the demand is, you know, in, in the time that you began uh, creating equipment on a smaller scale, do you feel the demand is increasing? Plateauing. What's what's your sense of what's going on? It's increasing a lot. It's increasing a lot because um, if the mass industry fails, the small industry can take advantage of this. Can can can. Oh, okay. Can That's grow up a little bit. This is at least my what what I have been learning through this last period. A lot of people uh, uh, with spirit of. Uh, initiative or entrepreneurship, they started a business uh, on a small scale in the textile. Mm -hmm. That was quite uh, impossible before. It didn't, it didn't exist. If you talk to the industrial people, they don't know what a small fiber mill is. <laughs> now, now we know what it is. Not only we know what it is, we, we, we follow them. We, we want to be with them and we want to help them to realize their their dreams, to make their dreams uh, come true. So the answer is yes, it's growing a lot and everywhere. Hmm. So what's your vision for Ramella? What would be, we've arrived, Have you heard, is, there, is there a next challenge on the horizon we, that you see? We, we want to, be, you know, every company has a vision, you know. Right. Uh, we, we, we see ourselves like uh, the World leader, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, we are biased, of course, but we, we want to be the best in the world to sell this uh, kind of equipment for small productions, uh, sustainable economy, and all those those things together. We want to this to be the, 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 the part of the market in which we are the best in the world. And uh, of course, we have competitors, but. Uh, we, Accept competition. It's, uh, it's just something that gives you more energy. Yeah. And uh, yes, continuous improvement. That's what we want for ourselves for the future. Sounds good. Sounds really good. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your time. Thanks. All right. Bye. <laughs>
And you travel all around the world yes, to do this, yes, right? Yes, correct. Wow. From New Zealand to North Europe to South America, US, basically everywhere. Yeah. So what piece of equipment got you started with all of this? Uh, the carding machine was the first one. So and, and we have one of your carders. Yes, that, that's one of the very first one. Wow. Probably the fourth or the third, I'm not totally sure. Okay. And yeah, the carding machine was the, the machine that we made at the very beginning. And then later we also uh, made the deherrer and then the opener and then the draw, well, the, the pin drafter the okay. spinning machine and yeah we are trying to well we're not making all of those machines we have also supplier that they make some of them for us yep. but we are lucky to be in a very textile spot in Italy so it's easier to find the, the right person yeah. for this job and a lot of the parts you're manufacturing from the raw materials yeah. here yeah that's very cool so what are the machines that you make in this building yeah the well what we like to do is to keep inside the uh, the core of the machine so like the main structures the big steel parts and some details that we don't want other people to know how we do it yeah but we also have other meals making like the laser cuts or some yep. other parts that we don't well we are not efficient in making inside so we we tend to be flexible so part of the production is done with local meals and part is done inside here. So what is your favorite piece of machinery to it's, work on? <laughs> it's, it's the Kada, it's the Kada, because okay. from my opinion, well, there was a book and the Kada was described like the, the heart of the, of the meal. So, and, and obviously it's the, it's the very first one that I've made, so I'm quite proud of it. And the story is also longer than this, because at the very beginning, it was very hard to deal with fibers like alpaca, so yep. I had say to invent a device to, to make that possible. So I'm quite uh, well happy and proud about it. Uh, and also, it's impressive. It's impressive in my opinion the, the size of the carder because it's thick, solid, and yeah, yeah it's always nice to see when they are machined. Yeah, and maybe I can show you later because there is one on the yeah. on the milling milling machine. So for those, I mean, most people who watch the Millcast do know what a carter is. We've talked about it, but I'm curious to know what you tell people. What does the carter do? Yeah, the carter is basically transforming the, the tufts or the opening fibers into a sliver, which is the first form that can be used in the entire process. So it's something that cannot be used directly on the spinning frame, but that's the very, the very first form in which the fibers are aligned in a certain direction, are kind of uniform and are manageable. So it's not like a bunch of fiber, it's not something without a shape, but it's something that, it's the beginning of the entire process. Yeah, it, it sort of organizes yes. them into Correct. it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe we'll uh, get a few shots of some of the equipment yeah. so we, we can show people and yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you too.
Yeah. What an awesome I don't know if people watch I'm curious to see what you all think about this because to me I arrived at Ramella and I was like wow just because I work with equipment like this every day I can so appreciate oh my gosh there's a can coiler oh my gosh there's a carter and I naively thought oh we're just going to be in sort of a showroom and and that'll be that but to be right there with the equipment in different phases of being made and designed and yep. yeah um we're going to be talking about Romella for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it was like being kids in the candy yeah, store there. no question. And there are just not very many manufacturers making equipment like this in no. the world. So it really feels like the mecca if you are, you know, a small fiber mill yeah. owner to come and just see what these amazing pieces of equipment are and like the ones that they're sort of prototyping right yeah. now. And Incredible. Wow, they're doing some really good work. I'm so glad they exist. I'm so yeah. glad we got to be here. Yeah, this, what a privilege. This is pretty, pretty special. So more, we're, um, we're going to do a little more walking around and then uh, we'll head tomorrow to Milan. Milan. And so we'll give you a little update from uh, our and I just times wanna, around I, Milan. Yeah. I want to say one struggle we've had since we arrived here is the Italians, that it's not like in Spain. They're not eating dinner at 10 oh, o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they are eating dinner no earlier than 7 yeah. o'clock. And some places don't even open till 7.30. So we arrived here and we're like... What are two ladies who are very used to eating at like five, between five and six, six. supposed to yeah. do? So what have you got here? Uh, uh, some <laughs> local cheese that is incredible. Can you bring cheese back on the plane? Well, you are checking a bag, so you can definitely check it. Yeah, uh, but I know I've been, so I've been stopped for sausages before, so right, I'm not sure right. about cheese. It's something about the consistency and the Yeah, Spanish, and what are they so gonna have sniffed on? We can dogs? try. Yeah. Although I know, that, um, I know that when I was living in Denmark, my host mom would bring back cheese from Italy sometimes. Okay. So. I guess so. Well, we're going to eat as much as we can first while we're here in Italy. <laughs> Ciao. Anyway. So we, we did make it to Milan, and you're seeing some shots of us at the Duomo. Right. That's the big cathedral in Milan. It's actually the third largest in the world, the largest in Italy Republic, but the Vatican is actually larger. Um, and, and I had no idea that you could go up on the roof. And <laughs> so when we said, oh, yeah, let's go on the terrace section, and we're climbing up and up, I have a extraordinary fear of heights poor amanda's <laughs> watching me like in every shot i am clutching <laughs> yeah you'll see some photos of peg up on the terrace I am she made the it railing. very yeah. proud of her uh we, we, were, had, we were up there yeah we had some gelato in milan yep, uh, we did. yep yeah so we had you know basically half a day there and yep. then we went back to our airbnb basically got uh mixed reviews on how well we slept that night and then we woke up in the morning and had a very long travel day back to I, the states I, I think it was about 20 hours all in it was incredibly long we were yep. exhausted by the time we got back uh, but we got back we got back and so. it was just a a great trip we 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 accomplished what we needed to accomplish yeah you so, you'll, you'll hear more but yeah it was great yeah so Next week, we'll have a little bit more of a traditional Millcast yeah. episode. We'll yeah. get you caught up on what's been going on in the mill. We want to say thanks to our amazing crew here for keeping the mill running. Yeah. This is the first time both Peg and I have sort of left for this log, and yeah. the mill did not shut down. So, uh, And thank you also to Todd and Cody, who came in and installed a new hoist, <laughs> which went out. We used Literally, a, the last day the before last we're leaving. The last minute of the last day, Leah comes over and says, Hey guys, are you still here? And the the hoist after two and a half years, which we used to scour, had just for some reason stopped working. Kaput. So we quickly ordered a new one. It was installed by Monday night, thanks to yeah. uh, our husbands. So yeah, it was great. It was <laughs> yeah. great. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Mm -hmm.